Okay. Here's an interview on California Insider. Uh, he is talking to Bill Wells, a mayor of El, El Cajon, which El Cajon is a city down in San Diego. And uh, this, is, this is quite telling. Bill, it's great to have you on. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We want to talk to you about an issue that's affecting us in California. We have a lot of people crossing the border. We are hearing some news about it, but it's not really uh, talked about a lot in terms of our cities and uh, places in California. Your city, you're in San Diego, El Cajon, your city of El Cajon is one of the hubs. And, and that's another thing too. It needs to be talked more of the devastation that's going on in California, city by city. The devastation. That people are getting dropped off. Yeah. And you've been pretty vocal about this. Can you tell us <coughs> what's happening? Well, this really started back when Title 42 ended, and we were expecting a lot of migrants to be coming a across the border and into the cities. And we braced for that, but a lot of people didn't come. Well, e they did come, but they immediately were helped out by Jewish Family Services and Catholic Charities who made sure they got to their destinations. And so it really wasn't the big problem for the cities that we expected. So then recently we heard that another wave was coming and the problem was- Another wave. The tsunami. The tsunami's coming. Another one. This time, those organizations no longer were able to help these people, that they were kind of overrun and, and they no longer had the capacity. So now we really wonder, well, what's gonna happen? You know, these people are going to come, be dropped off, maybe they will have nowhere to go, maybe they're gonna need help from the city. And uh, what we're seeing is in San Diego County, in the last five days we've seen- Yeah, Gavin Newsom's like, yeah! City will help you, Catholic churches, other Christian organizations, homeless shelters. Yeah, who cares? Just they're going to keep coming and they'll take care of it because we don't know how to take care of it. We're going to let them take care of it. About 3,500 people dropped off. Wow. Which is not nearly as much as you're seeing in places like El Paso. Um, New York, uh, probably. Well, they eventually end up in New York, but uh, a lot of them are, are overwhelming the Yuma station and, and, and some of the uh, Texas stations. But San Oh my God, poor Texas. Jeez. San Diego, we believe, is on track to become a, a much larger place for dropping people off. And the reason for that is kind of interesting. What my friends on the Border Patrol are telling me, not what I'm getting from the federal government, is yeah, because the federal government ain't going to tell you nothing. That the cartels are really directing where people are going. That the, the cartels are coming up on these groups of migrants coming up. And do you think you think the Biden administration is in cahoots with the cartels? It's just a thought. It's just a thought. In cahoots. They're pulling guns, machine guns, and they're redirecting them towards the San Diego border. And we think the reason for that is, is that by tying up the San Diego border, by pulling all the Border Patrol guys off the line. Now, mind you, this is Border Patrol telling him this, telling him this, not the federal government. And into the station so they can process these people that they have free reign to cross the, the border with, for their sex trafficking, for their narco trafficking, for their gun trafficking, and, and all the other illegal things that they want to do. All the drugs, the fentanyl, that's making them all zombies all across the country. That might be part of the reason, but we're not completely sure about anything. And these 3,500 people that are getting dropped off in San Diego, what will happen to them? Well, we don't really know. Um, they're, they're being dropped off at one of four drop-off locations in San Diego County. And my city, El Cajon, is, uh, I'm, I'm the mayor of the city of El Cajon. And 
one of those, uh, we're one of the drop-off stations. So it's been kind of a trickle for us right now, about 25 or so, maybe 35 a day being dropped off. And that doesn't sound like a lot, right? That really doesn't. Off. We're trying to get these people directed to a bus station or to an airport so they can go to where they need to go. But some of them don't know where they are. They have no money. They have no cell phone. They, they, they don't know how they're going to even care for themselves. So we're seeing that becoming more of a problem. These people coming across, probably 90% of them don't have family here. They don't know where they're going. They don't have a map of the country. Yeah, we're going there. They don't have no money. They don't even speak the language. What are they going to do? Problem. The thing that bothers me most is what I'm hearing from people in think tanks and, and the Border Patrol guys themselves is that there's a huge influx of people just on the horizon that will be coming. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We, we, we might see a lot more people coming. And if people cannot go anywhere or they, so, so some have destinations to go or they have friends and family. Is My God. Look at this. This is just insanity on steroids. Is that how they're, they're going to places yes. where they have? And the people that don't, what happens to them? Well, at, at that part, it, we're trying to figure it out as we go along. I mean, some of them are accessing the hotel in San Diego where they've, they've leased this entire hotel for migrants, but it, it's pretty full. So some of them are reaching out to homeless shelters and trying. And who's paying for that? Taxpayers. Trying to get into the homeless shelters. But as you know, California has most of the homeless people in the nation, so there's not a whole lot of room for another wave of people. You would think that somebody from the federal government is talking to our office and saying, hey, we've got these people, they're coming, you know, here's what we're going to do, here's the plan. Uh, nothing. We get no... Nothing. Where's Newsom? He's not doing his job. Uh, information from the federal government whatsoever. We get a call from somebody on the Border Patrol the day of, and they say, hey, we're probably going to drop 35 or 40 people off today. And, but they don't tell us when. And by the way, in San Ysidro border crossing, um, that trolley station and at Oceanside, they're getting like 500 people a day. So they, they, they're getting a, a much worse uh, number of people than we are. But I, I know it's the same for them. There's, there's no direction. There's no funding from the federal government. There's, there's no plan from the federal government. No funding. There's no plan. They don't care. 500 a day? Five hundred a day in that one little city. Federal government. There's no even acknowledging from the federal government that this is happening. Yeah, and most people don't know about this, right? Most people. Mm -hmm. Some people have watched the news about it, but some a lot of people still don't know that this is happening. I think more and more people are knowing about it now because it's in the news. It's been in the news every day now. Thank God, it's getting out there. America, we need to stand up and go stop this insanity. Yeah, it's pretty appalling. I mean, in my frame of reference, the federal government caused this problem. This is a completely... And there it is. He's the first mayor I've heard say that. He should be governor of California. He could probably fix it. Um, artificial problem that didn't have to happen. We've, we've always had... Uh, people that want to cross the border, but there were always ways, the legitimate ways that people could come into our country. And usually that meant if you wanted to apply for asylum, That's you went hard. to an embassy in your country, applied for asylum, and then you were granted it or not granted it. But you didn't make the trek from Venezuela up to the to the border. And oh my God! You know, Trump told him. Mexico, hey, I'm going to cut you off. You let El Salvadorians cut through your Mexico, your borders, to get to our borders, we're going to stop sending you money. 
And boy, that worked. That worked. We didn't need to pass a bill or talk about it or discuss it. It's like, hey, you want money? Stop it. Stop it. Because they like that money. They like American taxpayer money. They love it. So they stopped it. But not the Biden administration. Mm -mm. Not the Biden administration. We're going to give you some money. Let them come over. La, la, la. And then, then apply for asylum. Now, in terms of San Diego, you're the mayor of uh, El Cajon, and you've yeah. been actually in the city. You were born and raised, right? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, all my life. Where do you think the city is headed? Because when I, I moved there in 2001, it's an amazing city. Where do you think the city is headed? San Diego has always been one of the most beautiful places in the world. Very clean, very friendly, uh, very safe. And now if you try to go to... Not anymore. Downtown San Diego, you have to walk through miles and miles of encampments that are worse than Bangladesh. Worse than Bangladesh. Third world countries, right here in America. Bangl worse than Bangladesh. How did we get here? Why are we letting this happen? Why are we letting this happen? I'm angry about it. I'm angry about this. This is pathetic. That this Biden administration has turned us into a third world country. Trash everywhere. People using drugs in the open air, people having sex in, on the street, um, people defecating and urinating on the street, uh, pit bulls, uh, you know, barking at people that are trying to pass by. You, you take your life. Good Lord. Almost people got pets. Life in your hands if you had to walk a mile down in downtown San Diego. There's just, there's, oh, wow. and, and we're having situations where people are being assaulted and, and there's all kinds of problems with that. Yeah. I'm sure they're getting assaulted. Defecating in the streets. All that garbage and trash. Where's the environmentalists? Where are these tree huggers that have been screaming for years? Save the planet. We want fresh, clean energy. Fresh clean streets where are they why aren't they picketing why aren't they out protesting look at our streets of san diego the filth the drug needles defecating in the street which when it rains all that washes right down into the bay kids can't even go to the beach now all that stuff's running down there. Got to go somewhere. Serious health issue. Where are all the tree huggers? Where are all these people so concerned about the planet? Where are they complaining about this? Uh, you want to say, well... We're, we're destroying the planet with our SUVs. Well, it looks like this administration is destroying California with pollutants. They're garbage. These tent cities garbage defecating in the streets. The runoff. But no, regular American law-abiding citizens are destroying the planet because they want to have a fireplace in their house. They want to drive an SUV. They want to barbecue outside with their family on the weekends. Oh, hell no. You can't do that. But it's okay to have tent cities because we're so compassionate. We're so compassionate. Um, 
there's no reason to live that way. I, this is a political ideology. This is a decision that homelessness should be acceptable. And frankly, California has passed laws that have made it almost impossible for cities to do any kind of enforcement. So they really- And there you have it. That ties into the crime. Not passing ordinance of laudering theft because of Gavin Newsom's policies. Destroying California, turning it into Bangladesh, worse than Bangladesh. Really basically said to the people throughout the country, come to California and be homeless. We'll give you lots of benefits, uh, lots of money, and we won't bother you. You can, you can do drugs on the street, you can st You could do whatever you want. Here's some needles, go ahead. Look, the cartels are coming over. Because we, we've, the cartels, the Biden administration got them to shift and bring them down towards San Diego. So the cartels can bring in the drugs that you need while you're on the street being homeless because we're looking out for you because you need those. But by the way, this little clinic down the street, we'll give you the needles you want. Go ahead, throw them on the street. It's okay. It's all right. After you use them, not a problem. You are not a problem. We encourage this behavior. You're being a law-abiding citizen. We want, we want to just destroy the city. We're going to kill the city. Destroy. With poop in the street. Deal up to $950 a day without being arrested. You, you can be violent without being arrested. And... Um, we so you can steal $950 a day at a store. Well, we all know the targets are closing. So they ain't going to be able to steal from that store. So if they can't steal from that store, they're going to go to another store. But you're not going to be charged with a crime because it's not over $1,000. That's just pure genius. You've, uh, I think California has become a much, much worse place. And people, you can see that, I mean, California lost enough people to lose a congressional seat last year, and just coincidentally, um, Florida gained enough people to get another congressional seat. So it, it tells you that people are fleeing California. Bill. Yeah, we knew that. We knew that. They're fleeing. They're fleeing California like the plague. Now, there's people who can't. They can't afford to get out of there. They're stuck. They're stuck, but they want to get out of there. Those poor people. My heart goes out to the law-abiding citizens who are stuck there, paying outrageous taxes. They can't even go to the store. God, I can't believe being, I, I couldn't imagine being in California and having children, worrying about them on a daily basis. You couldn't let them out of the house. You have a deadbolt locks on your door. A homeless cat that might be right around the corner. And you've got children. God, God, that's just a bloody nightmare. That's just a bloody nightmare. Wells, Mayor of El Cajon in San Diego County, it was great to have you on California Insider. Thanks very much. I had a great time. And if people want to get hold of me, they can send me an email at my city address, which is bwells at elcajon.gov. El Cajon is E-L-C-A-J-O-N. And I would love to hear from anybody that wanted to talk to me or give me their ideas or tell me why I'm completely wrong. That's fine, I'm open to discussion. I don't think he's wrong. I think he, I liked everything he had to say. He's the most honest uh, mayor I've seen so far, saying, hey, th this is a problem. This is, and it's the federal government's problem. It shouldn't have been a problem. Right. But I think he was more on the nice side. I'm sure his inside voice is just screaming like the rest of us. But he has to have some decorum. And I respect that. I do respect that. If you like the show and our content, you should go to InsiderCA.com and sign up to our newsletter. Cause we Guys, check out California Insider. He's got some phenomenal, phenomenal stuff.
on the state of affairs in California. He has just done a brilliant job bringing this stuff. He should have way more followers, way more. I mean, you know, I think he's on this channel. He's got like 369K. But y'all need to check him out. Please go check him out. Give him, Show him some love because he's doing the work. He's doing the work. And there you go. That's what's happening. You're doing.